can okay. hear us. Okay, okay. great, Perfect. great. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's great. great. Then probably, then we, probably can we can start. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> okay I want to thank all of you, all of you for joining the meetup today. Uh, so, so I think that, I think that we have planned many of internal, internal e-commerce audience, also but also we have, we have some probably some other people who have joined. Uh, maybe, uh, maybe we'll wait a little bit more, maybe a couple of minutes, minutes to let other join, and we will start start up the meeting. I'm muted. So. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, is it any better now? Uh, do you still hear the echo, or is it getting better? Can you please type in in the chat? Okay, <laughs> so yeah, probably we can start now. Just let me know if I should speak up maybe, or can you hear me well? Apologies for the inconvenience with the sound and uh, this technical items just this is really the first time that we're trying to broadcast live to youtube channel so i <laughs> hope you forgive us for, for our first steps in this path okay great so let's kick off then ah welcome everyone so uh today um i would like to introduce uh some concept which is some of you might have been familiar with for quite a long time and pe people here we, they are coming from different backgrounds, I suppose. Some of them are IT, uh, some are not very strong IT people and just making their first steps in their career path of QA, let's say. So uh, today, me and my colleague Stefan uh, will be introducing crowd testing and one of the platforms for these purposes, which is called Test.io. Um, so um, I'm going to explain to you like why it's worthy, why it's a good thing to try, and uh, also um, just uh, let Stefan introduce one of the best crowd testing platforms in the world. <laughs> it's, I think, top five or top three even. Um, so uh, let's uh, probably start. Um, my name is, um, my name is Julia Chupira. I have been working for IPAM Spain for two years by now. Uh, I have moved uh, since the time actually I have moved to Malaga and the office started in this beautiful and nice location. And uh, I do have some testing experience uh, in different domains, uh, mostly within functional testing and manual testing uh, with regards to banking and finance area, also telecommunications and uh, uh, also mobile gaming and applications. Uh, and I want to introduce my colleague Stefan, who will be uh, helping me not to miss some important things uh, about Test.io platform and the product itself, because he's uh, the community and product manager for Test.io. So welcome, Stefan. 
Thank you, Julia. Thanks for setting this up. Um, as you said correctly, I'm community and product manager for Test.io. And since one year, we are part of EPAM. And we are very happy about this uh, with all the support we receive. And yeah, I'm looking very much forward to tell you more about Test.io today. Thank you very much. So uh, before... Oh, just a moment. Before we, we start, I would like to mention one quite important thing from my point of view. So within EPAM, for our uh, internal EPAM crowd, we already have some program, internal program, which is rolling out in big locations, uh, specifically for Russia, Belarus, uh, some India and uh, Ukraine as well. So uh, if you would like to participate and on board uh, with Test.io and uh, you, you are located in one of these locations, it's better to, in the first place, ask your resource manager or line manager about the details, how to better approach this. And uh, our main contact for the program for internal EPAM employees uh, is Katerina Yakutkina. So uh, she's very friendly. You can just drop her an email and she will gladly tell you more about the, the details. So we are planning to roll out this program to other locations too. So stay tuned and uh, follow the news. <laughs> um, uh, so I think now we can switch to the main topic of our uh, meetup today, uh, which is crowd testing in the first place. And uh, I will briefly explain the concept of crowd testing itself, so what it is and how it works together. So uh, crowd testing is kind of a testing practice uh, where a wide, uh, when a wide range of people is involved for testing. So maybe some of you uh, do not really know how the process is organized internally without, within the companies, but basically um, there is a team, development team, consisting of BAs, uh, business analysts, uh, testing, uh, test engineers, development, developers, and they all co collaborate together following some specific, a specific process. It can be waterfall, agile, and it's children like Scrum and maybe Kanban. Uh, I don't want to overload you with this terminology, just maybe later on, if you feel interested, you can read about it. So they have a defined process they follow. And um, internally, it's uh, kind of difficult to uh, make it very flexible and to get more feedback from people uh, for whom these applications and software is targeted. So uh, basically, crowd testing is an evolving trend nowadays um, in software testing, which exploits basically uh, the benefits, uh, effectiveness and efficiency of uh, basically a crowd and some cloud services which does uh, on, on, on the basis of which it is performed. Uh, crowdsourcing um, is a term that has been used to describe the process of requesting like crowd to perform the tasks rather than just hiring the internal people and consultants within a company. Uh, in this regard, I would say that this uh, approach is most user oriented and basically mm, the people from different locations from different categories in terms of age, uh, location and everything, um, they just all they need to, to do this work um, is just to have some devi devices that they use on a daily basis like uh, computers preferably connected to internet, of course. Uh, also like laptops, tablets, I don't know, mobile phones, uh, wearables like uh, fitness bands, etc. So they can just use these devices to, uh, to do the testing. Um, basically, um, about the advantages of the crowd testing itself. Um, in the first place, it's uh, very convenient and flexible in time. So you can choose whatever is the best fit for you with regards to your working schedule and uh, uh, how you arrange your working hours. Um, with regards to the experience, for example, I know that some people can be very, very experienced uh, in testing area already and they can be working as full time employees on the project. And uh, some of you probably just are just making your first steps in testing QA and trying to learn what IT is. 
And basically for both of these groups, uh, it represents a diversity in different projects. So uh, if you are a full time employee and you are working, let's say, in banking area or in some medical uh, medical appliance or something like that, and you would like to switch your domain to something different, let's say it would be shopping and retail or um, some particular mobile gaming application or just mobile application for weather or etc. It's, it's a good thing to try and especially that mobile testing is quite popular nowadays with different platforms for iOS, Android, etc. Um, and for the new joiners actually it's a, mm, like for example I know that there are many courses nowadays that offer a possibility to learn the testing theory, um, the background of de development, different uh, programming languages etc. But quite rarely they provide um, practical experience so that you can learn how to apply the knowledge that you've gained from the theory. So for such cases, it's a really good um, place to, to start and gain this experience, especially if you will be looking for a job and you don't really know, like you just finished uh, some school or graduated from a university and you just have no practice at all. Another thing is money, of course. So it's uh, a good bonus and uh, I know that some people uh, earned quite a lot uh, on these kinds of platforms for crowd testing. So basically you are earning uh, the money for the defects that you find in software and sometimes you even can earn for rating the applications like you're providing some kind of user stories, feedbacks to the clients and uh, something like that. And uh, as for me also, it's a very good networking possibility uh, because like within uh, crowd testing platforms, it's like, as you know, it's a crowd and you have uh, many people from different locations, different territories, continents, and different time zones, etc., different languages spoken. So you can extend your uh, social network, in fact. So you can also share experiences with, with people because um, on the crowd testing platforms, uh, there are also like beginners and also team leads. So the range of people in between also uh, who can share, your, share with you your, their experience and maybe give some nice practical advice. And of course, it's a very good language practice in terms of um, uh, in terms of that you can uh, you can practice uh, English, for example. It's it's very good one. Um, so before we move on to the next slide, it's like uh, one of the means that I want to mention about uh, crowd testing is exploratory testing. It's one of the testing types um which is uh, most widely used um uh, in explore uh, in, in crowd testing so this is approach uh in software testing when the tester does not really have to follow um well prepared and documented in advance test scripts so normally how it works in the internal companies there is a long process of the preparation test preparation so basically you have to work with the requirements you have to investigate and put together the test cases then you have to execute them so this is kind of long process with the exploratory testing it's slightly different you just don't really need to to follow the step by step things you have to just have some idea in your mind and you will be checking application on your fly on the fly based on your experience uh, sometimes it's even common sense uh, your intelligence creativity and experience with previous product of the same range and basically your intuition. So this is a good thing to, uh, you, you can be looking into like, you know, the deepest, there are some corners that are not documented in the test cases and something that is slightly different, like you are quite free in exploring the application and software that you are doing testing for. Uh, some of the advantages actually, they cross paths with the crowd testing in my view. So it's again, very flexible and effective in time. Um, because uh, as, I, as I mentioned already, you don't really have to spend much time in the preparation work, all this paperwork and reviews of the test scenarios. Uh, that's why it's quite flexible and gives you freedom in many regards to, uh, to, to, to test, uh, to make the steps that you think are most suitable in this or that particular um, 
scenario. Uh, also, it's an opportunity for investigation and learning because you're basically exploring the application. Uh, and speaking of the previous experience, if you have some, for example, in shopping and retail and you're just checking the web page that was recently uh, introduced and you're checking hmm, how the cart works or uh, how is it different and convenient for the user, things like that. And from the customer perspective, of course, it's uh, it helps a lot to get real user feedback, basically, um, from the uh, target audience. Um, that's briefly the concept about crowd testing and uh, exploratory testing, how it fits together. So now I hand it over to Stefan, and he will tell a bit more about Test.io and the platform itself, uh, how it works. So. Thank you, Julia. Yeah, as you mentioned correctly, we are an industry leader in the field of crowd testing. Um, I'm pretty sure if it comes to the amount of test cycles we offer per month, we are on rank one. So, um, And we have been among the very first who created this concept of crowd testing, which has many advantages, not only for customers, but also for, um, yeah, for freelancers, for people working on our platform. Um, it's a highly dynamic place. And um, yeah, um, I also told before that we are now part uh, of EPAM for one year. Um, and if we travel back in history, we have been founded in 2011 in Berlin, Germany, where still our headquarter is. Um, and two of the three founders are still part of the company, now part of EPAM, uh, our CTO, Jan, and our uh, head of sales, um, Thomas, um, and yeah, I two amazing people, two amazing colleagues uh, where we have a lot of fun working with them. Um, yeah, 2015, we opened an office in San Francisco uh, where we have about 20 employees. And um, yeah, it's also there are uh, definitely similarities with EPAM. Um, EPAM has a lot of business in the US as well. So we have a lot of customers there. Um, and um, yeah, we from the beginning we specialized in consumer facing web and mobile products because this is the real use case if you want to have real user feedback you get that from the you get it the best way from real people um, so yeah we are specialized on this so in total we are nine years in operations we have more than 200 clients and we have a large database of testers where we can which we can access and we have a highly international community of thousands of testers uh, to which i will tell a bit more later last year uh, our bug number one million was found um, and it uh, received a blog post for this special occasion. Um, so, yeah, we are proud on that as well. Maybe a few words about the clients, yeah. Yeah, so this is, these are some logos of our clients. I think you all know SoundCloud. Um, we, of course, the, the uh, total amount of customers is much higher, and some of the logos uh, we are not showing here. Um, I think you're all also familiar with BuzzFeed. Uh, we have some um, car manufacturers as customers as well. And one customer we share with EPAM actually is Edmunds. Um, so these are some examples of the companies we are working with. And you as a tester will see the recent, the latest beta apps and beta releases for. So you can have a sneak preview on those uh, highly anticipated software they, these companies are about to release. So why Test.io uh, from a tester perspective uh, specifically? Um, yeah, uh, as I mentioned before, we have a high volume of test cycles. We are a very dynamic platform. So from the very beginning, you will be, as an approved tester, you will receive uh, a lot of invitations and you have a lot of um, test cycles to choose from. So it's really up to you what you make out of it and um, yeah, be sure that we will discover talent if we, uh, if we notice it. Um, yeah, then you will be able to earn good money on the platform. The, the highest payouts we have are uh, $50 per buck. We pay in euros. So um, yeah, but for the, um, 
for regular critical bugs on the platform, you will be able to, uh, to earn about $15 on the platform. And as uh, was mentioned before, you will not, we are no longer just focused on, uh, on reporting bugs. You will also be paid for testing user stories, which are similar to test cases, small, um, yeah, you could say a short test cases. Um, of course, you have the freedom to work from anywhere you want. We have testers who travel around the world and work from various locations, um, which is very amazing. But of course, you can work from home, which is especially in these times uh, quite interesting. And you can also decide to work from the park or from a cafe. No, mm -hmm. apologies, just a moment. <laughs> so we skipped some, <laughs> some yes, slides. We went through, slide, straight through to the, to the very end. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so going to the last point probably, so. Right, and as I mentioned before, you will be, you will be having access to latest and highly anticipated beta apps uh, that you will have a, a sneak preview for. So um, yeah, a lot of people are on our platform who work, who are IT professionals themselves and are just interested in how other companies make their product releases and how other companies test their software. And that is interesting, an interesting input for their professional jobs as well. I actually wanted uh, to add uh, several words about the Test.io Academy. I think it's worthy uh, of special attention because it's a, a treasury of uh, different knowledge that is collected in one place and which is not excessive in my opinion. And uh, you can, it's, it's, it's a good place to start uh, getting acquainted with the requirements that are needed for the platform. So uh, basically it um, uh, contains uh, many theoretical knowledge on the different testing types, different types of bugs, uh, how the bug report, for example, should look like, things like that. Uh, and it covers a really a uh, big variety of topics. So uh, in the testing space, of course, not something, <laughs> so not, not much different. So in that page, you can also find some details about, for example, payout or some most frequently asked questions with regards to working on the platform in general. And also it contains useful hints uh, on how you can um, like, will, which will help to save you time, basically, uh, when you will be doing the evidences uh, for the bugs, basically, so you will have to attach something that proves that the bug is there. It can be a screenshot or screencast, and it has like useful hints with regards to that particular thing, too. Uh, and uh, about Test.io com community, uh, I know that Stefan knows a couple of interesting facts and community, in, as I mentioned, is quite important thing. So here is a picture from one of the events, I think. Stefan, could you mm -hmm. please tell a bit more? Correct, yeah. So we have a highly international testing community. We really don't exclude any um, yeah, uh, any location uh, beside uh, beside the U.S. restrictions, of course. Um, so, but we are, have a highly global community of testers uh, which work for and with us and for and with our customers. So, um, but of course, there are certain hotspots on the world. Um, for example, we have a lot of highly talented testers in Ukraine. Um, where I know EPAM has a lot of uh, very talented people as well. So that's another thing we have in common. And uh, that picture is from one of our community events we had in Kiev. Um, so yeah, really highly international community. And we try to also meet in person from time to time. Other than that, we are, of course, a remote company. Um, a crowd working company where mostly people work from their homes. So it was very much enjoyable to see each other in person there. To, ma to map the face to a person. <laughs> Definitely, yeah. 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 Uh, okay, uh, thank you very much, Stefan. So um, these are facts and like high level about the company and the platform. I will tell you a bit more now about the registration process and how you can onboard uh, so that you can kick off the, uh, the testing part basically. So, um, when you enter the Test.io website, um, you will see like a button there, which is saying like become a tester. And if you click on it, you just follow the registration steps where you have to enter 
um, your personal data uh, and uh, your devices that you're using. Um, some um, also you know, share um, the experience that you currently have and also the status if you're employed or not and just specify the languages, time zone, um, also um, like the, devi the devices I've already mentioned, so uh, stuff like that. Um, and uh, then from that point, basically you will be uh, able to open your personal uh, test IO uh, dashboard uh, where you will see the details. So in the first place, um, after you signed up, you will have to pass the so-called onboarding quiz. Um, and um, uh, after the quiz, so uh, just let me quickly, yeah. So uh, the onboarding quiz is basically containing of two parts. The first one uh, will be a theoretical one where you will be explained um, both in the text format and in the video as well. Uh, all the videos are actually collected on YouTube platform, so you can watch them directly from there. Um, so you will have to uh, look through the um, different, uh, different uh, theoretical points like um, what types of bugs can exist, like content bug or visual bug and things like that. Um, how to document uh, um, properly the bug report, what should be there, uh, which steps it should contain, uh, how to, what should be mentioned like in the first step, how to document the bug evidence, like how a screencast should look like or what should be there on the screenshot. And uh, so all of this information will be provided in the first part of this, qu uh, of this quiz, so kind of preparation. And then you will have to answer 12 questions uh, basically on the topics that you have just looked through. Um, the thing that uh, you should probably remember while you will be doing that is that it's not critical to answer all of the 12 questions. Uh, if you did it, that's perfect. You're a guru, we definitely need you. Um, then uh, you just, I think you, you need to score eight out of 12 points uh, to proceed to the onboarding test. Uh, onboarding test uh, is, uh, Yet a different thing, uh, which is an internal test IO test for you. Uh, how well you um, uh, how how well you digested the materials from the onboarding quiz. Uh, it will consist of several rounds. You will get an invitation saying that the test cycle has started. Just the only difference is that this test cycle is first carried out internally within test IO before like com as, as compared to the real cycle which is with the customer application customer software and uh, uh, during this onboarding test you will have to report three functional bugs uh, on the websites that are mentioned uh, in the instructions uh, you will uh, and uh, if they are approved by the team leader then you are in additionally to that you will have also a bug reproductions course uh, this is something um, independent from the general onboarding process and I think Stefan can give a bit more details about how it looks and why it was introduced. Yeah, thank you, Julia. Um, so doing the quiz and then the onboarding test afterwards is the one path you can take uh, on the platform as a beginner. And this combination will unlock basically um, the complete platform for you. If you are less experienced and are maybe new to the field of QA, you can start with the course for bug reproductions. Um, yeah, it is independent from quiz and onboarding test. and. Um, after completing this rather easy course, um, of course, you will need to spend some time studying the academy articles or the content you see before um, and the, the video you will be shown. Um, but after completing that course, you will unlock that very task on the platform and you can directly start earning money on Test.io. Um, you will be offered a variety of bug reports from other testers um, that you can reproduce. Reproductions help customers, help the people who um, who triage the bugs. Uh, the reproductions help them to uh, get a be better picture if it's uh, limited to just one device or if it's appearing on many other devices. So um, this is re bug reproductions in a nutshell. And 
um, yeah, we took care of excluding that task of splitting that task from um, the rest of our test cycles. So you have the chance to directly look at bug reports from other people, reproduce them, learn through that. And after you might be more experienced with what kind of bugs we have on our platform, you will have a better understanding and will have a better chance of uh, completing the quiz and the onboarding test. Just uh, maybe a few cents from my side. It actually helps mm -hmm. you to understand if you did not pass anything from the onboarding part before, it really helps you to understand uh, what a bug can look like, for example, if you're not familiar with some testing at all, like what can be a bug on a web page? Okay, if it doesn't open, that's that's clear. But for example, something is uh, skipped due when the device is rotated in different mode from, I don't know, from standard to landscape or something like that. And um, I, uh, the important thing, I think it's about the payout as well, because uh, you are getting paid for that too. Like it, it's 10% of the uh, original cost of the original bug. Mm -hmm. And you will see that uh, payout transparently uh, once you accept such a task. And um, yeah, then later in your test archive, you will find that payout information as well. Okay, so about the quiz in general, uh, I have, oh, sorry, I have, I have gone through uh, most of the things that Stefan can. Yeah, you, can. you did uh, explain it pretty well. So we, we, we said before that the, the one path to unlock everything on the platform is completing the quiz and after that the onboarding test, um, which the onboarding test, in fact, is uh, often multiple tests. It's uh, um, rarely a test as pass it in just one test. So take a bit of time uh, to complete all of this and come back if you want to finish it later. Um, yeah, some additional information about the quiz. So we will show you the content, which helps you to pass the quiz. And uh, at the very last page of the, the content pages from the quiz, you will also get access to this video. And this video explains you everything you need to know to pass the quiz. So listen carefully, press stop and play, maybe repeat the video one more time. Um, and this video will definitely um, help you to pass the quiz. That's really true. I can confirm that sometimes you have to, if you want, weren't listen very, listening very attentively in the beginning, you have to move, go back and just re revise it. But in general, the video is very helpful and you will be able to pass the quiz like. If you just watch it, it's fine. About the onboarding test, uh, I wanted to mention several instructions that might be helpful for you uh, before you jump on it. So basically, um, once you get an invitation to the test run, uh, you will, it's, it's basically a test, a test run. Uh, so you will um, see, so once you go to your page uh, in dashboard, so you will see this test run and once you click on it, you just need to read the requirements which are written in this page really very carefully like because they, they provide the information. What is in scope? What is out of scope? What areas you should not be paying attention to and what you should focus on? That's really important. Um, then uh, on the quick start guide, there is uh, it, it, it's yet another helpful instruction from Testio Academy, uh, which um, explains to you like in details what you, what you should do and um, what what things you should remember about during during this onboarding test. Um, also, you would need to revise some information about the bug types and also the bug severity. Uh, these are two things that might be these are basically characteristics uh, of the bug. So bug types are mentioned also in the onboarding quiz. So it explains what is visual bug, content bug, and usability and stuff like that. And um, uh, also um, one important thing to, to, to remember about is the bug report requirements, because with Test.io they are sort of strict, I would say, because you need to, uh, well, not really very strict, but you need to remember and keep in mind things that you should still keep on the bug report, like what uh, you should, how you should describe the steps, how you should put together the summary and the description of the bug, and also the requirements for the um, evidence of the bug are also important. You need to, to follow these instructions too. Uh, with the real testing process, uh, which follows the onboarding basically, uh, you will have to it's, it's relatively similar to the uh, onboarding test, the invitation for which you have got. 
and you have to check the mailbox and basically follow the instructions that you will receive. And um, the test run will look pretty similar to what you have uh, for the onboarding test. You will just see the link um, specifying the type, what kind of software you will be testing, if it's a website or something else. Uh, once you open the test IO dashboard, you will you will see it. And there you will have to confirm that you do you do participate in this run. Uh, basically, there is like an nice to Xbox. Uh, or you can you have a chance, of course, to um, to to deny this kind of invitation. You can pass. Uh, you can pick any other that you want. Maybe this one is not suitable for you, or you do not have time for it. So you're just free to decline. You have to provide the reason why. And um, if you decided to pick up this test run and participate in it, you will have to confirm that you will not be placing any orders to the cart. It's important. So don't, just don't purchase anything because sometimes it's a production site. Uh, and I think that's it. Uh, the only thing that you need to bear in mind is the time because the, te the test runs are limited in time. So it, sometimes it's three days, sometimes the duration is just one day left or things like that. So this is important to, to remember about. Uh, Stefan, could you please tell a bit more about the team communication during the test run, how it works with the team leader and like mm -hmm. how people work, cooperate basically? Yeah, so um, a very important role uh, on our platform are the testing team leaders. Uh, they make sure the quality we forward to customers are uh, up to our standards and up are up to uh, what the customer expects from test.io. You mentioned the high standards of our bug documentation. Um, so we really take care of that. And the team leaders will help you to make sure that your bug report is up to the test.io standards. So after you submitted your work and this whole process counts for the onboarding test and for real customer tests afterwards as well. Um, after you submit your work, um, the, the work um, will be reviewed by the team leader, whether it be a bug report, whether it be a user story you just executed. Um, and the team leader will, um, if everything is fine, fine, then the team leader will take care of forwarding it to the customer. Um, it will probably be not fine from the get-go in the beginning, so um, please keep in mind that the team leader will then send you a request to edit the bug report, um, to edit the documentation you attach, to edit the screencast, um, to change the, the bug title, to improve it. Um, and uh, yeah, don't please don't see it as bullying. Please see it as a learning process. Uh, the team leader is really um, in between the customer and you as testers. So the team leaders will, um, yeah, they really um, want to deliver good quality for the customer. That's why they will send you these requests. Um, for all requests, you will have 18 hours to answer. Um, otherwise, the bug report will be automatically rejected by the system. That sounds very harsh when you first hear it, um, but please keep in mind that the usual time frame um, for our test cycles is 24 hours. So uh, we have a highly dynamic platform where a lot of tests run and a lot of tests are also shorter than this duration. The shortest test cycle can be can run two hours. So uh, please keep in mind that uh, we are a highly dynamic platform. That's why we. Um, that's why the platform has to behave this way. So make sure that you answer the requests from the team leaders that you edit the bug report. Um, so that it's good to go. Um, and uh, yeah, uh, after that, the team leader will then decide to, um, yeah, will then hopefully decide to forward it to the customer. And the last review happens from the customer. Um, the customer will then say, um, will then either accept or reject the bug. Uh, it can, of course, happen that it's not a bug at all. Uh, and the customer will tell you this, but um, yeah. Um, most of the time, the team leader decided already correctly so that the customer will accept the bug report. And after the customer has accepted the bug report, you will receive the payout. Um, this can have a bit of a delay after you submitted your work. And uh, once you finally see the payout on the platform, um, 
but if you are uh, in the progress, if you are in the process, if you are used to working on the platform, then um, yeah, you will see a constant stream of um, of money of uh, euros coming in for you. Thank you. Just to think that uh, I think one one thing. Uh, important is to mention about the document the bug report basically itself uh, just uh, think of it as um, a good practice for uh, especially for the bug reproduction when somebody will be trying to reproduce your own bug and um, it's really good to have like as, as much details and accurate steps as possible and video that does sometimes really good very, very good job it's really helpful to if you just cannot grasp the idea it's better to see once than to hear 10 times the thing that I wanted to mention is about the referral program. Uh, there is a possibility to refer a friend or invite a friend or somebody you consider uh, interested in this. Uh, basically, uh, you will get, get a five euro bonus once a person gets registered in the first place um, and uh, they should get approved also um, and uh, after onboarding to the platform. And also they should, rep uh, should be reporting uh, five bugs which should be accepted by the customer. So these are ma the main rules for um, getting this five euro bonus. Uh, and just yeah. one addition. So all of these criteria need to be met in, in order to receive the bonus. Um, and you actually can also refer others after you complete the sign up. So you yourself don't need to be approved as a tester. Um, you will before already get the referral link. So if you have a if you have a large community or if you have a forum where you want to introduce others to the platform, you can just create a tester account and don't need to be approved on the platform to refer others. Mm -hmm. and a bit more details about the payout itself. Stefan, could you please help? Yeah, this? definitely. So um, I know a lot of you are from Spain. So I will start with that special requirement we have for Spain. Um, for everyone who, um, who provides a country within the EU, uh, we ask for a European VAT ID uh, in order because of legal requirements um, and um, the, the validation service we use for that can be found within the link. I think that is one of the links we will provide after the afterwards. Um, and um, yeah, if please check beforehand if you can acquire such a European VAT ID. And um, yeah, then uh, the process for Spain is a bit different. Um, so this is not automated. Instead, you will send this European VAT ID document to us. We verify it, and then we um, yeah we set your interface as good to go, and you can be paid from then. Um, as you have seen before, you are working on the platform. You are submitting your work, then the team leader, and then afterwards the customers reviewing your work, and then you are collecting. You're accumulating money on the platform, and um, the next month you will be able to request that payout. Um, so at the 11th of the month, we have um, we have the previous month completed. We collected all the bill items. Then you can request your bill from the tester interface. Um, you will be requesting um, the bill then. And um, yeah, you have time for that between the 11th and the 20th. And after the 20th, then we start with the payout process. The different, um, the different payout options we have on the platform, we can see on the next slide. Um, the different payout options are either PayPal, uh, Skrill, um, which works similarly to PayPal, are also Payoneer and bank transfer for people uh, with a European uh, with a European bank account. So, um, yeah, for a Payoneer, it's a bit special. If you sign up there, you will get a German IBAN and BIC number, um, and you can fill this payout information um, in the field for bank transfer to get paid via Payoneer. Mm -hmm. Okay, so probably now we through the expectations for the beginners who are going to onboard to the platform. 
Yeah. Um, so as as mentioned before, it's to avoid disappointment. Please check before if you can obtain a European VAT ID. Um, we have heard different things for some uh, for some of our freelancers. It's the easiest things in the world. They have a company or they are freelancers uh, already, so they have this VAT ID and it's no problem for them. Um, but sometimes also people start working on the platform, then they uh, realize they have difficulties acquiring this VAT ID. So I recommend to check if you can obtain that beforehand um, to make sure um, that will work, the payout will work for you. Um, yeah, mentioned before, take your time for the onboarding test. Don't think you can do it on your commute to the to a friend or somewhere um, or at the airport or something uh, really take take some time to do the onboarding test um, if you don't find the time to complete it come back and finish it later no problem at all um, and yeah um, it's not um, it's not it will not be done in one or two hours just take a bit more time yeah, uh, a lot of testers um, have been just regular people before. They had no idea about IT. They had no idea about QA. So they learned a lot on the platform. Of course, if you are new to this field, it will be uh, it will take a bit more time until you have learned everything. But it definitely works. Um, if you have technical background, even better. Uh, if you have technical background in QA, it's also pretty good. Um, Keep in mind, if you bring technical background or if you bring experience from other crowd working platforms, um, you do, don't expect everything works the same way as on other platforms. That often the challenge we have with uh, QA professionals or testing professionals um, that they, yeah, so test, the test IO rules, uh, the bug types we have on the platform, they are a bit differently uh, than what you usually have. Then we also have a lot of people. They sign up uh, and think they are just uh, they are just uh, rating apps, or we are focused on usability, or they just uh, tell us, okay, I like this app, I give five star rating for it. It's not easy as that. So of course we have usability tests, and you will be invited for special tests. We also have exciting testing projects where you will be you will receive a piece of hardware at home and will be mainly rating the app and unboxing it. But we are still focused on functional testing, uh, functional bugs like app crashes, um, or if a checkout process does not work. So um, that is. Uh, in a nutshell, what you can expect as a beginner on Test.io. Thank you. Just uh, the things that I wanted to point out uh, with regards to the materials that you can use for preparation for the onboarding test and that might help you actually in the future. Um, the first thing is, of course, Test.io Academy, because it, uh, it contains a bunch of different stuff there. Uh, different uh, different topics, um, different hints that you can find useful. Uh, the link is included, but it's very easily accessible from the test.io page itself. Uh, then also you have uh, we have a YouTube channel for test.io, which contains all the videos that uh, you can find in Academy and in the onboarding quiz. Uh, and uh, it also, I think it has a bit more information about um, Sometimes video is, is really more useful than just looking through the text, which is written down. That's why it's like it shows some examples and you can see it there and it's accessible very easily. And yet another course uh, that I would like probably to recommend for people who do not know anything about software testing in general, um, it's related to the testing theory and the testing basics, I would say, uh, which starts what from the testing uh, testing history, like when it started, what is uh, explains what a bug, when it was found in the first time, different types of testing, different approaches to testing and technologies used. So you can um, make a deep dive into this part just once you're uh, once you're done with the first two. Uh, but it's not a mandatory thing. It's just in case you would like to uh, to understand the whole process a little bit better. 
So I think that's it. That's it from my side. Um, and I think we are done with overall presentation. So if you guys have any questions, just please feel free to type in the chat and we 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 are gladly try to answer them and ho hopefully Stefan can help with the questions. I don't know answers for so. Thank you very much. Uh, the question uh, that is coming from Vitaly, uh, if a person can work without EU VAT number? Mm, I think it depends on the it depends on the location and depends uh, on the residence actually. Yeah, mm. so uh, I'm back. I uh, hope you can hear me. I uh, had yes. a disconnect for a second. So um, yes, from people who reside within the EU, we need a bad ID. Of course, you can work, but you won't, we won't be able to pay you. So uh, you can, you can test if you do it just for the passion, uh, if you just do it to collect experience, but we won't be able to pay you. Sadly, this is a legal requirement, which, uh, which we have to follow. Maybe some other questions. We still have time. Um, I think we are went very quickly through all the points, so we still have a lot of time. Just in in case you want to have a bit more details about anything. We're just getting lots of thanks. I don't know if you can monitor the chat. Just um, Vlad, who's not around, he's uh, our technical expert and helping us with organizing the presentation and uh, uh, broadcasting it actually to the YouTube channel. Uh, I wanted to mention that I will share the presentation with all people who registered here uh, just in slides so that you can find all the links there. Um, I hope that we will still have the video part and uh, I can attach the most important things and pin them to the YouTube video just just in case anyone will be looking for it. Just the last last call for the questions <laughs> before we can close the meeting. Yeah, as you mentioned, we will share the information, the presentation afterwards. You can find also a lot of information on the test.io website. And um, yeah, I think uh, I guess a lot of people will be just curious now. And then the best is always to try it out for yourself and to try out the platform for yourself. Yeah, maybe maybe you can share the information with your friends or somebody who might be interested in trying this. Just maybe you heard some somebody was asking like, hmm. I, I don't know, my salary was reduced by 50%, like my colleague, for example, from Ukraine has, and things like that. So maybe you can help by this means, by sharing this information with some other person who is seeking for some additional income or for additional ways to, to earn money or just improve their experience in different area. That, that's also helpful.
Okay, I think we are good then if no questions come in. Uh, Julia, I would like to uh, say a special thank you for setting up this event, for preparing all of this, for uh, for creating the slides and uh, making sure the whole organization went really smooth. Thanks a lot for that. Um, and thanks everyone for joining today. Um, we are planning to run more events like this. So if you are interested, then uh, please join again and please reach out to us and to all the people involved. We will be happily answering further questions also afterwards. Yeah, thank you very much. And I really appreciate that you could find time to participate and just tell the guys a bit more uh, about the practical approach and just share more details about the platform in general. Thank you so much. Uh, have a great day, guys. Uh, see you next time. Cheers. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.